another iOS programming tutorial. In this video, we will be continuing the previous tutorial on how to add custom annotations, how to change their images, and how to change the title and the subtitle of the callouts. Okay, so now that we've gotten our one Pikachu point that works perfectly well, we can move on to do the rest of our points because I have a whole entire four more Pokemon that we're going to put on there. And I'm just going to warn you right now, I don't play Pokemon Go. I've never have. I, I know that some of them, but I've never actually played it, so I'm sorry if these don't exist in Pokemon Go. But they look cool. That's all that matters. So now we're going to be adding more points to our map view, and we're going to be adding a different image to each one of those. If we look at the structure in our function map view, you can tell that it might not exactly work because this is only setting one image for one point. So it's probably going to set the image for each one of our points as Pikachu. We're going to create a new custom class for our point annotation right at the very top of our document. Uh, we are going to type in class custom point annotation. And this is type MK point annotation. So here's our class. And our class is only going to have one variable in it because it's the only one that we actually need to set separately. Variable image name. And this is going to be a string. Because what we're doing here is we're not going to be actually... We're not actually going to be putting in an image, we're going to be putting in the name of the image. So when we get to this part down below, we can select the name of each one of these images, of each one of the points, instead of doing it for just one. So now what we're going to do next is actually, we're going to go to our Pikachu pin and we're going to need to change this part right here. It is still an MK point annotation, but it is now going to be our custom point annotation. And our custom point annotation is still an MK point annotation, so it is still going to work. So all of our code that we wrote in the view did load and in the functions is still going to work properly. Now what we're going to do next is actually we're going to go to our couple lines of code down here in the view did load. And we, right before we add the annotation onto the map, we are going to make a new line. Type in Pikachu, not coordinates. Pikachu pin dot image name. If we did not set the if we did not set the class of our Pikachu pin as custom point annotation, we would not have access to the string. But since we changed it to custom point annotation, we now have access to changing that string and to set it for Pikachu pin specifically. Uh, the name for Pikachu pin will be Pikachu dot PNG which is right here in our list. So now we have chosen our image for the Pikachu. Now we're going to create a variable for each one of the other Pokemon. Again, might not be in Pokemon Go, but they look cool, so put them in anyways. We're going to make we're going to copy and paste that variable four more times and we are going to rename each one for one of the other Pokemon. Okay, now that we have our five custom point annotations, we can change the information for each one of them. Unfortunately, those are the only coordinates that I have, so I'm just going to put in some random coordinates that are more or less close to the first one. And it'll probably be in the middle of the ocean. At least one of them is going to be in the middle of the ocean. I know that for a fact. So... What we're going to do first is we're going to rename all of these Pikachus, because they're not all Pikachus. And even if they were, it would give us an error. So we will rename them. Arbok, coordinates. Our next one is going to be Char... Charmeleon. Our one after that is Ivysaur. And our last one here is 
or Tanner. Okay, now that we've renamed all of them, we can put their names into these lines so it's not all Pikachu. Does that just be just five different annotations on a map? Each one of them is Pikachu. <laughs> They're not all Arbok either. I, okay, don't name them all Arbok. This next one is Char Million Pin. Okay, so now that I have renamed all of my Pikachus to the actual names that they're going to have, we're going to go and change the coordinates so they're not all overlapped on each other. I don't actually have good coordinates, so I'm going to put in random coordinates and hope that they work and they don't appear in the middle of the ocean. Okay, so now that we put in our coordinates, just check through all of them, make sure that you renamed every single name there, because if you didn't, something is going to go wrong, something's not going to work, and it might take just a little bit of time to figure out what it is. Now, we're going to probably delete this print statement, because we don't want to make five print statements, that's just a waste of time. And it should work anyways, because we already tested it. Now we're going to go to our function map view, because we need to change this right here. If we just leave it as it is, it is going to make every single annotation have Pikachu as their image. So we actually need to change this line of code right here. So before annotation view, we'll just make a teeny tiny bit of space and we are going to create a new variable which is going to be called let CPA, our custom point annotation is annotation as and that is going to be an optional custom point annotation so we're basically saying that this CPA is going to be an annotation of the class custom point annotation which means it's going to have the image name option inside it and all of our coordinates or all of our Pokemon here will Technically, they are also animate and they're also custom point annotations. So now we're going to take this part right here, Pikachu.png. We're going to delete it. It's not Pikachu.png anymore. We're going to type in CPA dot image name. So we're going to be getting the string image name. We're going to be getting the string image name. So let's say it's for the Rattata. It's going to get the string image name out of here, which happens to be Rattata.png, and it'll make the image for this coordinate point Rattata. If it was going to be Pikachu, it would get the image name of this one. It happens to be Pikachu.png, so it gets Pikachu. So if you're going to have multiple annotations, you need to make sure that you have these two written as so. And now we should be able to run it, see our multiple coordinate points, Actually, uh, no. We're gonna make them all negative. We, so we can find all of them in the correct places. So now that our app has built, we can already see that our code does work. Because here we have our Pikachu callout in right in New York. And right here we have our Arbok, which is in the middle of the ocean. I wonder what kind of landmarks there. Um, so let's click on our Pikachu. And the callout comes out saying Pikachu. So we know that works. So let's click on Arbok. We get the callout that says Arbok. So we know that works. Here's the rest of the game. We click on the Charmeleon. We get the Charmeleon pop-up. If we click on Ivysaur, we get the Ivysaur pop-up. If we click on Rattata, we get the Rattata pop-up. So this works. That is how you create 
a sort of like a Pokemon Go Radar style map thing. I think that's enough for this episode. There is quite a lot of other things that you can do, like styling the font in the actual callout, styling the background color, the corner radius, and the tip of the callout are also customizable. But that's probably going to be a slightly longer video, maybe, maybe not. And also, this video is getting pretty long. And I just wanted to go over the basics, so I hope that this was useful to you. Again, the project is in the description down below, so you can download it for the images, or if it just doesn't work, you can check out my code and see how yours and mine are different. Uh, thanks for watching, please like and subscribe, and I'll be seeing you in the next tutorial. Thank you.